much left. That's the only thing that oh, needs to be done. Fun's not gonna get a lighted fire. Always a reason to find the lighted fire. service either. The first thing you're going to do is learn a song. People used to tell stories and learn songs around the fire, and that's how we're going to start Easter today. A song we're going to sing again and again as we go through the service this morning. It's just, the words are really simple. There's only one word, Alleluia. I'm going to sing it. We're all going to sing it a couple times to be sure we know what we're doing. And we're going to get going. The song goes like this. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. neighbors know that it's Easter this morning. <laughs> so we begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious and powerful God, we come before you this morning surprised, amazed, confused, just as your first followers were. We pray that you will awaken in our hearts the awareness of your resurrection today and always in our lives. Be with us now as we worship you. We thank you for all that you have done for us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The sparrows and the closer, the Israelites look back and saw the Egyptians working toward them. The Israelites were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Weren't there enough graves in Egypt to be took us away to die in the desert? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt like this? Didn't you tell you the same thing to be done in Egypt? Leave us alone. Let us work for the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to work for the Egyptians than to die in the desert. But Moses said to the people, Don't be afraid. Stand your ground. Do not. The Lord wants to be today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You just keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to get moving. As for you, lift your shepherd's rod, stretch out your hand over the sea, and split it in two so that the Israelites can go into the sea on dry ground. But me, I'll make the Egyptians stubborn so that they will go in after them, and I'll gain honor at the expense of Pharaoh, all his army, his chariots, and his cavalry. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, and I gain honor at the expense of Pharaoh, his chariots, and his cavalry. God's messenger, who had been in front of Israel's camp, moved 
you might be hiding. The column of cloud moves from the front and took its place behind them. The stood between Egypt's camp and Israel's camp. The cloud remained there, and when the darkness fell, it lit up the night. We didn't come near, we saw it all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord pushed the sea back by the strong east wind all night, turning the sea into dry land. The water was put into two. The Israelites walked into the sea on dry land. The waters formed a wall for them on the right hand and on the left. The Egyptians chased them and went to the sea after them. All Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and cavalry. As morning approached, the Lord looked down upon the Egyptian camp from a column of flaming and cloud and threw the Egyptian camp into a panic. The Lord jammed the chariot wheels as if they didn't come in the way. The Egyptians said, Let us be away from the Israelites, because the Lord is waiting for them against the Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water comes back and covers the Egyptians, their chariots, and their cavalry. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, as they did. The sea returned to its normal depth. The Egyptians were driving towards it, and the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the cavalry. Pharaoh's entire army had been filed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. The Israelites, however, walked on dry ground through the sea. The waters formed a wall for them on the right hand and on the left. The Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians that day. Israel saw the Egyptians spread of the future. Israel saw the amazing power of the Lord against the Egyptians. The people were in awe of the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang his song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for an overflowing victory. First and rider he threw into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was very, a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe, seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. We are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of them into Galilee. See him there just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can sit if you want. There's a plastic on the bench, so it shouldn't be too wet. Or you can stand wherever you feel comfortable. I wonder if you remember a TV show called Dirty Jobs. Yes, Mike Rowe, who uh, for some reason decided it would be a good idea to find all the most disgusting and terrible things people have to do for work to help other people have what they need, go out and do those jobs with them, and, and learn what their lives were like. And obviously, the part of the entertainment was just the, the grossness of the things he had to do. I think when he first proposed the job, the channel that he proposed it to said they didn't have any room in their schedule for a talk show that took place in a cesspit. 
that to get an idea of what the job was like, but that wasn't really the point. The point really was the talking, wasn't it? Yeah, it was gross, but he was learning from the people, and they formed this connection. These wonderful people he met who were doing these, these terrible, dirty jobs. And I should have warned you, this is not a normal sermon. There will be audience participation in the sermon. I'm going to tell you about a dirty job I did, and I'm going to ask you if you have any examples from your own life of things you've done that were like that. When I was 15, I spent the summer in Somalia, and because embassy kids tend to go out and get bored in the summer, they found jobs for us. And my job was to go out with a work crew to clean up houses. Uh, the, the embassy owned all the houses that the embassy workers lived in because there were not many places that were good to live in. So they would send people out to clean them between occupants and also to clean out the new houses when they were built before the first people went to live in them. And the job I remember in particular was I went out to a house where they had put down tile on the floor. It had a raised pattern in it. I guess they didn't have the normal stuff you would use to lay, to lay tile on the floor, so they used cement. And there was cement under and between the tile, but there was also cement on top in all the little bits of the design. And so I spent days with a hammer and a screwdriver chiseling out the cement that was in the designs of the tile. It was a thankless job because it, it, it was so small, it produced so little for each amount of effort that I put into it, and yet it was my job for that time, and I did it. And there were other people working alongside me, Somali women working alongside me, who, uh, this wasn't just their summer job, it was they did all the, they did all the time in their entire lives. So I was able to form a connection with them, to know who they were, to talk to them as we sat there doing this job that seemed so futile and so meaningless, uh, and yet something really important godly came out of it in the people I got to know. Many of you have a story of a dirty job. There's an awful lot of moms sitting here. <laughs> Lots of people. I'm guessing there are one or two dirty jobs or any you feel you can repeat in public. Uh, when my son transferred from Coastal Carolina University to James Madison, we had to go and move him out of his apartment in South Carolina. He and two other soccer player boys had been living in this apartment all year. Fairly certain that the bathrooms in the apartment had not seen any kind of a scrub brush in the entire nine months they lived there. The other mom was a nurse. She's like, I'm pretty sure SARS is growing in here. It's, it's pretty disgusting. And it took me an hour and a half with the aid of a toothbrush to get all the gas out of the ground in the bathtub. My mother would tell the same story about my college apartment. I have no doubt. <laughs> I'm not cleaning my daughter's college apartment. <laughs> Just for the rest. Well, it's not to say they didn't help. We, you know, we set them on the stain that was in front of the television set. I don't even want to know what that's about. <laughs> well, one time my daughter was living with a friend who kind of went off the deep end. There were fleas in the apartment, and, I, and the, uh, the roommate had written on the walls. It was, it was a long day of just picking up, throwing things in the dumpster because there were fleas on there. When I, uh, when I was a boy, we had a great <laughs> We Southeast Ohio. We had pretty hard winters during that time. So we would let him out. He would go into the side yard and come back immediately. And when the snow thawed, my father gave my brother and I a pair of shovels and <laughs> told us to clean up out there. And it looked like a minefield. It was... So we had to go out and, and clean that up. And uh, we found all our G.I. Joe toys, <laughs> pieces of carrot, lumps of tin foil, the strap to my binoculars case that was in bite sized pieces, <laughs> and uh, threw it in the ravine next to the house. <laughs> well, 
we first moved out here, um, I was in the kitchen and there was a bee on the wall. So I climbed up on the counter and I took my flip flop off and I tapped it and thousands of bees came out of the wall. <laughs> and well, I ended up using hairspray. <laughs> so I had to clean up the whole thing with the hairspray and then I had to cut this giant nest out of the wall. You have better stories than I do, all of you. This is kind of where Easter started, isn't it? The faithful women who went to the tomb to do a dirty job. You notice that there are no Peter and James and John, there are no Roman authorities, there's no Pontius Pilate in this story, there are no temple authorities. Uh, to be honest, there are no men at all in this story, and that should tell you something about who normally does the dirty work. The women who were the faithful followers of Jesus, who had sacrificed more than most of his other followers, given who they were and what they were doing at that time, were the ones who went to the tomb to do this job. And that is when Easter happens. It's not churchy. It's not nice and polite. There are no white gloves. There are no chocolate eggs. It, it's not like they're sitting politely in rows listening and waiting for something to happen. It happens in the middle of going and doing something they had to do. And that is often where God comes to us, not in uh, the moments of perfection, not in the moments we expect, but in the moments when it seems like everything is lost, when we're worried, when we're confused, when nothing seems to be going right. That is when Easter first happens so often in our own lives. I have a story about that too, and then it's time for audience participation again. <laughs> when my parents moved up to their retirement community in Pennsylvania, I started going every other weekend, sometimes every weekend, to check on them. There's a point in your life when suddenly you start to take a greater interest in how your parents are after they serve that, that long period where they take care of you, and that period where you kind of ignore each other, suddenly it all gets turned around and I went and saw my parents an awful lot. Then COVID happened. And I went months and months just talking to them on the phone and never actually seeing them. And then finally I said, okay, enough of this. After a few months of COVID and feeling like we were trapped, we decided we'd have a picnic one day. So one Sunday when the bishop gave everybody the day off because he was going to do church for all of us, I packed up my picnic and I went up to Pennsylvania and we greeted each other from a long distance across a parking lot. And then we drove separately in our cars off to some place where there was a picnic table and we sat down again at a safe distance and had our picnic. And it was like the world had begun again. There was a, we were right next to a baseball field. There were kids who were gonna do their little league game that day. There was traffic, there was the, the beauty of the summer. It was if Easter had come for us that day, we would been resurrected. After not seeing each other for months and months, we were able to sit down and have a meal together. And although it was very simple, and we went away again and didn't see each other for a long time after, it was like a little Easter for us. To be reunited in that little time to remember what it was like to be together. I wonder if you have a resurrection story as well quite as easy as the dirty job stories, I don't know. <laughs> Has there been a time when something happened that sort of woke you up, reminded you of the grace of God that seemed to have been lost? When, uh, when we moved back to the East Coast from Oklahoma, in 1984, and my children were very small, two and three, and not really verbal a lot. Well, I can't get that um, <laughs> <laughs> But we, um, Stan had a job in Virginia, and we hadn't been able to sell our house, so we couldn't live in Virginia together. I lived here in Newark with my parents, God bless them both, and um, he came up on weekends 
And for me, Fridays were like that. It was like the sun rose again on Friday afternoon when he pulled into his parents' driveway. And we all had dinner together and had a chance to be, he had a chance to be dad, which he missed desperately during the week. Um, and, and we had a chance to be a family every Friday for six months. And it was really a wonderful gift to be able to do that. Else. If it doesn't come to mind right this minute, I hope it does sometime today. Maybe something that comes up in your memory when God was reawakened or reawakened you. Because that is the message of today. We talked about something that happened 2,000 years ago, but it happens constantly in our lives if only we will notice it. God continues to come to us. The, the Easter continues to happen all the time. We continue, undoubtedly, to God's amazement, to be surprised that God continues to do this. We continue to run away in fear sometimes when we see it happen. And yet God persists. Easter continues to happen. Thanks be to God, God doesn't stop doing it just because we don't notice. Just because we're not ready for it or because it wasn't what we were expecting. Thanks be to God that Easter continues to come. And for today, all that we need to do is be amazed. Amen. 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 Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. all of our worries, all of our joys and thanksgivings. We pray especially today for the world and for its needs. For peace in the Middle East. For the people of Baltimore as they sit through the end. The rise of the oceans. God of all power, this is the world that you created. We pray that you will look on it with mercy. Speak peace into the hearts of those who use violence. Speak hope into the hearts of those who have none. Guide us, guard us, and uphold us always. We pray also for the church, for its needs, and for its work. For a prayer of safety for all those who celebrate Easter today around the world. Prayer for all those who have to worship in secret today. God of all glory, you created us to worship. The church is your sacred mystery, your kingdom coming into this world. 
pray that you will strengthen it, inspire it, guide it always. Pray also for our community, for those our neighbors who are in any need or any trouble. those who live right next door to us but whom we fail to see. Loving God, you call us to love our neighbors. Help us to see them in their needs. Help us to open our hands to them and our hearts. Remind us always that we are your servants in this world. Pray also for those we know to be sick, those who are far from us, those who are in any trouble, those who are dear to us and who have been entrusted to our prayer. Pray for healing and recovery for Vicki and Marilyn. All those who know to be sick or recovering from any injury, surgery, illness. God of all gentleness. Pray that you will pour out the oil of your mercy on all those who suffer. Pray in your heart as we pray in ours for them. Hold them always close to you. Send your holy angels to dwell with them in peace. Remind them always that they are walking in your sight. And finally, we pray for all the faithful departed, those whom we love but whom we see no longer. especially for all those who have gone before us in this church, our ancestors in the faith. Almighty God, in whose sight all souls live and rest, gather to you all the faithful departed, Grant them rest and peace in that place where there is no pain or grief. Grant us also a share in your eternal kingdom. All these prayers we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I close my eyes to pray and I open them in the slide already. <laughs> Easter all over again. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. you. Offer one another a sign of the peace. God's peace be with you. So glad to have you. God's peace be with you. So glad you're here. Thank you. You know the words, dear friend. 
Gracious God, we come now in your, in your beauty of nature, standing here, feeling the solidness of the earth beneath us, breathing the air, hearing the birds, seeing the return of life in spring. We praise you for all that you have created. We praise you for our own creation, that we are able to stand here today and worship you. We praise you especially for this sacrament that we are able to receive, this bread and this wine, symbols of all that nature gives us and in all the ways that you sustain us. We pray that it will be to us a reminder of all that you have given us. Today, especially, we gather to remember this occasion of Easter, this time when you remind us of new life, when you remind us that death is never the last word. When you triumph over everything, we are able once again to stand before you and remember all that you have done for us praise you for our own salvation, that Jesus did these mighty things for us, not simply for people long ago, but for every one of us standing here before you today. We pray that you will awaken in our hearts the love and joy that that should create in each one of us. And so it is that we come before you with this bread and this wine. Pray that you will send the Holy Spirit upon them, that they will be your body and your blood for us. The sacrament that unites us with you and with one another. You remember that on the night before he died, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat this, all of you. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. supper was ending, he took a cup of wine, he offered thanks to you for it, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We celebrate this sacrament of joy and thanksgiving on this day. We pray, Almighty God, that you will make us a living sacrifice of praise to you. Pour out your Holy Spirit on it and on us as we eat and drink this and remind us that it is for our strength and not just for our comfort. Make it the bread that we need for the journey as we continue away from the empty tomb, away from this day, to be your servants in the world now and always by Christ and with Christ and in Christ. We praise and glorify God forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Lord taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. 
feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Bread is broken, it appears to become more numerous. <laughs> so it is always in the Eucharist. I'm going to pass the plate around, and the wine will follow the body of Christ. <laughs> To dip your bread into the cup, I suggest you tilt the cup a little. It's pretty deep. One last audience participation. We always give thanks at the end of the Eucharist for what we have received. I'm sure there are many things we're thankful for today. Name something you're thankful for. Help. Say thanks. My My family. Thank you for this day. My wife and my children.
gathering all of our thanks together. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all that you have given us. We thank you for feeding us this morning. We thank you for feeding us every day of our lives. We pray that you will send us out now to be your servants in the world, to carry your message, not to be afraid, but to be bold and joyful as we proclaim what it is you have done for us, what you continue to do in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Through the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Thank you all so much for coming out this morning. Thank you. Thank you. If you want, there are, there are Easter eggs and Easter chocolate in the North Egg. Because, you know, it's Easter. I, for one, was up early and didn't have a whole lot of breakfast. So. Mostly. I like my wife. <laughs> <laughs>